Hello and welcome to Breen Issues, the only program that provides you with a regular glimpse inside the Wichita Fire Department. I am Battalion Chief Sid Newby and in this episode we will talk about the importance of firefighter training and the Wichita Hot Regional Training Conference. The Wichita Fire Department is continually recognized as one of the best trained fire departments in the country. Many of our members have taught fire related classes at some of the most prestigious training academies in the country. Joining me today is a member who has taught classes at the state and national level but what really makes him stand out is that he has brought his skill and knowledge back to Wichita to benefit the entire region in the form of the firefighter conference, the Wichita Hot. We have here today Lieutenant Mark Meshack. Uh, Mark, could you explain a little bit your personal background and, and how you help out with the Wichita Hot? Sure. Um, my name is Mark Meshack. I'm Lieutenant Wichita Fire Department. I've been with Wichita Fire Department for approximately 10 years. Um, spent most of my time assigned to the downtown district and worked out of ones most of my time. Spent about a year in the training division helping with recruit class instruction and then until I got assigned to you in the fall when I got promoted to lieutenant. Um, Wichita Hot, I've been affiliated with that since its inception. I've served on the executive board and been an instructor at Hot throughout the years. I know you dedicate a lot of time off teaching and training across the United States. Can you tell me about how these experiences have benefited you and the citizens of Wichita? Certainly. Um, Throughout the years, I've been blessed to go out and, and attend training across the country. And um, as diverse as the job is, there's a lot of different ways to uh, accomplish the tasks that we're asked to do for the public. And so I've, I've had the opportunity to learn from several throughout the country, find some better ways, find some ways or reasons to kind of reinforce why we do things the way that we do here, and then been able to bring that information back to help our firefighters provide a better and more efficient service to the public that we serve. Good. Can you tell us a little bit more about Wichita HOT and what the acronym stands for? Yes, Wichita HOT is essentially HOT stands for hands-on training. Um, it's a school that was kind of put together by several of us in the fire department that had attended these, some of these natural training events and conferences. And essentially, we wanted to take what we had learned and bring it back to this part of the country and share it with other firefighters from Wichita and neighboring departments. Uh, the reality is some of the training classes and conferences on the national level are quite expensive, uh, anywhere from 1000 to $2,000 to attend. Uh, unfortunately, that, that money comes out of the firefighters' pockets. And so what we did is essentially try to take the information that we learned, brought it back home, and pass it along in a much more affordable manner for those firefighters that don't have the ability to take time off from work and go attend conferences like FDIC in, in uh, Indianapolis or Firehouse Expo in, in Baltimore. Okay. So it also helps the local community and also a regional community around our area. Correct. We actually get firefighters from all around the Midwest. Um, we've had them from as far away as Florida, but usually they, they stick around from Oklahoma, Nebraska, Missouri, Iowa, Colorado, the states immediately around the state of Kansas, and then firefighters from all across the state. Okay. So why is this training important to firefighters and also the residents of the city of Wichita? Um, it's important because essentially we try to present what we, what we consider street level firefighting skills. Um, just like any trade profession, there's a certain level of, of minimum standard of training that's required of members to become firefighters, whether they're career or volunteer. Uh, with that said, when you get out into the real world and you deal with real world complications of incidents, um, uh, you'll find there's tips and tricks and easier and more efficient ways to get the job done in safer ways. So why this is important to not only Wichita firefighters, but firefighters from around, uh, around the region is it gives us the ability to use our resources to, to the best of our ability, do it in a safer manner, a more efficient manner. And, and what that means for the citizens that we serve is that we have the ability to provide our services, our life-saving services, and in a more efficient and safe manner. So it means more timelier rescues, more timelier or quicker fire extinguishment, limiting damage and loss. Um, so ultimately, uh, the end user, the citizens, gain a lot from our firefighters being more rounded and much more professional in their jobs. And wouldn't it also help with like a mutual aid response to where maybe some of those firefighters in the surrounding areas have the same background, the same training that we have? Absolutely. And especially, you know, in the state of Kansas, because of the se severe weather threat that we face, um, there is a high likelihood or a very fairly high probability that um, departments that normally would not work together will be pressed into service to work together. So because of that, um, if our department has to go to outside agencies to assist or vice versa, um, you have some familiar faces, you have some 
professional relationships have been developed, and, and some common understanding about how each department operates. And so, again, that eliminates guesswork. It, right. um, you know, the fire service is a family, but it, it, it's an even broader family when you look at, a, at a, an event like this and the relationships we develop. So if we have a major event here, then as firefighters come in from our neighboring departments, they understand what we do. They understand some of the ways we approach things. We have those relationships. So it just streamlines our entire uh, emergency response as a whole. Can you give us an idea how many firefighters participate each year in the program? Certainly. Uh, Wichita Hot has varied through the years, but we typically uh, have an enrollment of approximately about 200 firefighters. Okay. And, and what are some of the different things that they learn throughout the classes? Um, Wichita Hot has always focused a lot on what we consider very down and dirty street level fundamentals. So we have what we call engine company operations, which is essentially focuses on strictly the fire suppression aspect of our job. You know, putting water on the fire and establishing water supplies to support that operation. We have classes in truck company operations, which is more supporting functions. Uh, ventilation to get rid of the smoke and heat. Search and rescue to help find the occupants more quickly, safely, and efficiently. Um, forcible entry, so as we're looking at trying to make entry into secured structures, firefighters have many tools in the toolbox to draw from. Um, and then on top of that, we, we get into some of our other services. Vehicle extrication is one that has um, been a class we've had many years that uh, gives uh, firefighters the opportunity to, to cut on cars, to face some different challenges they may see on the street, uh, to get more proficient at that extrication process. And this is training that they can get that will benefit them no matter how small volunteer or paid department that they have. Correct. correct. At, at the end of the day, we all try to accomplish the same tasks. Uh, the only difference is, is how many players we have on our team and how our team approaches the game. But at the end of the day, uh, these are predominantly skill level classes. So you don't really get into how your fire department's organized or what the political climate is or any of that. It, at the end of the day, it, it boils down to boots on the street, ways that we can do our job in a safer, more efficient manner. Are these classes offered anywhere else in the country and wow, how do our fees compare to other places that you've been? They, they are. They're, they're, there's many fire conferences, many great schools around the country. Uh, and again, Wichita Hot is in no way uh, tries to compete with those. Um, again, FDIC, uh, the Fire Department Instructors Conference in Indianapolis, you're talking about 25,000 to 30,000 plus attendees. Trying a very, very large conference. With that said, just the basic registration is about $1,000 just to register for classes. And then you have travel and stay and all of that. So most people spend between $1,500 to $2,000 to attend that. Um, there's, there's several other major schools like that. Wichita Hot, um, we charge $65 for two days of classes. We have a day that is strictly predominantly lecture-based classes, classroom, um, and then we have a day of nothing but hands-on training. So obviously there's a stark contrast in the, in the cost there. Um, with that said, you know, out-of-town firefighters are still going to have the lodging and the travel, but hopefully it's much less expensive and we're within driving distance of our students so they don't have to spend as much. And, and again, we, we in no way, shape, or form claim that we have parity with those national conferences, but we have many FDIC instructors involved with our school. You yourself are an FDIC instructor. You've been teaching at HOP for many years. We're blessed to have many fire department instructor conference instructors in our own backyard. Right. So the opportunity for our members to pass that information along at a more reasonable expense is certainly a very big blessing for the firefighters in the state of Kansas in this region. And yeah, we're blessed to have a local people that teach on the national level. Correct. Besides bringing people in nationally to teach. And, and that's the other thing. You bring up a very valid point about HOT. We, we try to constantly seek out outside instructors and keep the material fresh. Uh, the reality is is that the job is ever evolving and again departments from all across the, the country uh, uh, approach the same problems in different ways. So we try to continue to diversify who we bring in and um, fortunately because we've been able to develop such professional uh, relationships with many of these instructors, uh, they do us a very, very great service by coming in as inexpensively as possible so we can keep the cost down for the students. You and I are both members of the Fools of Oz. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that a little bit and what our mission is? Yes, the, the Fools organization, Fools is short for the Fraternal Order of Leatherhead Society, which is a throwback to old fire helmets, traditional fire helmets were actually handmade out of leather. Um, essentially, there was a group of firefighters in the state of Florida that would see each other at conferences on a regular basis. And they would get together after classes and just kind of talk shop, and they would each share experiences and stories from their departments back home. And one, 
there was, a, there was a common theme they all seemed to have. They all felt like that the tradition of the job was kind of forgotten, that nobody seems to really focus on the training as much as they used to, and there just didn't seem to be any of the brotherhood or sisterhood, the camaraderie of the job, like the members that they came up under had. Right. And so essentially, this group of individuals, almost, almost like a joke, formed an organization that that was its sole purpose, was the preservation of tradition, training, and brotherhood in the fire service. No department affiliations, no union or association affiliations, no paychecks, doesn't matter, career, volunteer, whatever. It's strictly a group of members that are interested in preserving tradition, training, and brotherhood, sisterhood of the fire service. With that said, that idea exploded because these were common problems throughout the fire service as a whole, not only in the United States, but across the world. So um, the Fools Organization internationally is over 5,000 members. Um, the Fools of Oz, the local chapter here in Wichita, is actually one of seven mentoring chapters for the United States. So our chapter is blessed with the opportunity to help new chapters that start out get their feet wet, kind of understand what the Fools is about, and help them kind of get their chapter going. Some of the events that uh, the Fools of Oz has been affiliated with is obviously uh, much of Wichita Hot has been supported through the years by the Fools of Oz. Um, every year we do a fundraiser uh, called St. Baldrick's which is essentially we uh, raise money through donations For and childhood support cancer correct yeah, yeah in support of childhood cancer research and then we all shave our heads in solidarity for that um, and then we try to host a, a number of classes um, locally uh, where we can bring in again outside instructors at a, at a low cost for members that don't normally have the opportunities for that. And we do it regionally, like with the Parsons Fire School and some other things, Lebec County. Correct, correct. We've been, we, we have the opportunities to teach all around, around the state, and at some times it's in organized schools like uh, Lebec County Community Colleges Fire School, all the way down to um, doing a small class in Chinook, Kansas, for the amount right. of firefighters they have there. With such a large training event occurring in Wichita, how does that enhance the Wichita Fire Department's status and reputation? Um, I think it's very important. Uh, one of the, the, the tenets, in my opinion, what was instilled in me as a younger firefighter is um, our duty to pass it forward and pay it forward. Um, I, you know, none of us invented firefighting. But somebody at some point in time taught every single one of us. And that came from them investing some amount of time or energy into us. And I think it's very important for us as public servants to also serve our own in that same way. I think it's very important that we pass along that information. Because the reality is if, if you retire and leave the job and you walk away with everything that you know about the job without passing any of that information on, that's a disservice to, to your department and the community that it serves. And so fortunately, again, we have people, and, and you yourself are one of them, that are willing to take time and invest in those younger firefighters, pass along your experiences and the training that you've received so that perhaps they don't have to make the same mistakes. And again, right. the, the ultimate winner in that is the end user. Our, our community gets much better trained firefighters that are better equipped to deal with whatever emergencies they have to face. Well, like we always say, you never learn it all. Exactly. When you think you've learned it all, you need to go. It's time to retire, correct. Uh, this is Wichita Hot's ninth year. What corresponding successes or return on investment of used, of used resources can be directly attributed to Hot? Fortunately, the Wichita Fire Department has been very supportive of, of HOT through the years. Although it isn't a department, quote unquote, department sanctioned event, um, they've been very gracious in allowing us to use the regional training facility. They've always supported us with apparatus and equipment. And we've also had support from outside local agencies, like the Salvation Army has always right. helped provide refreshments and services for students. So. Um, McConnell, the, Air Force McConnell Air Force Base has provided air and, and support in this. So we've had a lot of support from um, agencies within our community. Um, again, the return on investment um, uh, is really hard to, to put a finite calculable number to or something like that. But with that said, I think it puts our department and our community in, in a very good light. It sheds Wichita and the Wichita Fire Department and the firefighters and the citizens in this community as a community that cares about people. It cares about different yeah. communities, whether it's ours or another one. And so with that said, I think there is a great amount of regard and respect that comes to our city and our fire department and the members of those because we're willing to pay all of this forward. And again, those outside agencies like McConnell, Salvation Army, uh, we've had various agencies with uh, salvage yards and vehicles, colleges. And the co community colleges, lots of support that comes into this. And I think that 
that makes an impression on outside firefighters. I think if you ask firefighters that have come to this event before, um, th it is memorable. It's something that holds true to them. It's something that sticks in their mind and in their heart. And it's funny, you know, we always joke about as instructors and, and, and e-board members for HOT, every year we're ready to call it quits and then the event comes. And we get those stories from those brothers and sisters from around the state and around the region. They're like, oh, you guys are great. We really appreciate you doing this. This means so much. We don't have the ability to have this training. And that kind of refuels, recharges our batteries to keep yeah. pressing forward with it. So uh, again, you can't put a, an absolute benefit to the community other than it, it, it presents a great outward community image for the city of Wichita and the Wichita Fire Department. Yeah. And all of our firefighters that attend and even work and instruct in this, it brings their game up a little bit more. And again, that benefits our end users. Helps with their job knowledge, your skills, and their abilities. Absolutely. You continue to maintain being plugged in. And because of that, your proficiency in all your skills is at a higher level, which translates into better service to, for our citizens. Good. Well, we'd also like to introduce a new event to Wichita community this year that recognizes firefighters that gave the ultimate sacrifice on September 11, 2001 at the World Trade Centers in New York. Uh, the Wichita 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, the, ever since 9-11, um, it's been continuing to grow to, to memorialize those guys that lost their lives to host what is called a Memorial Stair Climb. Um, essentially, firefighters sign up to climb 110 flights in full turnout gear and SCBA in honor of those firefighters that died on 9-11. Um, several of our members had participated in one of a, a climb like this in Kansas City, and Kansas City has fills very, very quickly. Essentially, once you get 343, they cut it off. Nobody else can participate. Um, because just of one that, second. Just explain why the 343. 343 is the number of firefighters that were lost on 9-11. And so, uh, again, each member that climbs, climbs in memory of one of those firefighters. So uh, last year, one of our participants from Wichita was approached from the organizer of Kansas City's event and asked if we'd be interested in hosting a climb here because the neighboring events surrounding us, Oklahoma City, Denver, Kansas City, um, those are all full. Right. And so um, several of the members that have participated in climbs previously said, sure, we'd love to, we'd be honored to. You and I. Yeah, and, and a couple others decided that, well, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll add another committee to the mix. And uh, at the end of the day, we are now hosting a climb here. On September 12th, 2015, we'll be hosting a climb at the Epic Center. Um, so this is new to the Wichita area. Um, again, it's something that is very important to firefighters, um, it's something we are all very passionate about. Um, well, it, to me, it helps with the whole quote, never forget. Exactly. But also, we're paying it forward because the, the uh, charity that we've adopted helps the firefighters. If we have, still have seven to 800 firefighters currently that were in or helped at 9-11 that have, still have cancer today. And so the firefighter, FDNY, Firefighter Transport Fund, is our charity. Correct. That. Yeah, any, any funds that go above and beyond the support of actually hosting the event of the climb gets passed forward to the FDNY Fire Family Transport Foundation, which, uh, again, that organization um, essentially provides transportation services for firefighters and their families in a time of need, like a firefighter loss of life. However, as you alluded to, there's over 700 plus firefighters in the fire department in New York still battling 9-11 cancers. FDNY Fire Family Transport provides services to doctors' appointments and things like that for these families or firefighters and their families. So we thought it was a very appropriate selection as a charity because they obviously can never forget because they every day continue to face the after effects of 9-11. And unfortunately, we memorialize the 343 and a lot of firefighters in the fire service remember those 343. They don't realize the 7 to 800 that have battled in are still battling those cancers. Exactly. And there have been many more that have lost their lives after 9-11 as a result of that incident and the mitigation of it day, the, the weeks following. Can you tell us a little bit about the gear we, we carry with us when we go up for this memorial? Yes, we, uh, all firefighters wear full structural turnout gear, which is our, our pants, our coats, our helmets, and the SCBA, the bottle that we carry our air in. Uh, some firefighters will carry hose packs or tools. Uh, you know, when we climbed last year in Kansas City, we had a hose bundle with all the 343 firefighters' names written on it. Um, but at a minimum, the firefighters wear full gear and air pack. And again, it, it's trying to um, 
help even the firefighters realize what an, a daunting task that day must have been. When you're in those stairwells, when you're climbing those steps, you're working together as a crew, much like those guys did that day. Um, there, there's something very surreal, and there's something that really brings that home, how difficult that task must have been. Yeah, when they give us that badge with that person's name on it, and then you know that they didn't make it that far, so we're going 110 flights for them. That's what really brings it home. Exactly. The, the, we, we essentially, the firefighters participate in the memorial climbs, cl complete the climbs that uh, the brothers that were lost that day were not able to. Thanks for coming today. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. This concludes the episode of Burning Issues. Remember, Wichita firefighters are highly trained professionals who are your friends and neighbors. We are Wichita's bravest, serving you in many ways every day.